Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Dead Malls, your one home for the coolest mall content and everything retail related. In tonight's episode, we conclude our short two-day stay in Maryland by rounding out our visit with a Tom at the very end, a giant, beautiful, sculpture-filled mall that was in its final week of operation before closing forever. That mall was, of course, Gaithersburg's Lake Forest Mall, and this was a very interesting visit because not only did I see and document a mall, but I also got to converse with locals and other members of the Dead Mall community, all of them paying their respects to Lake Forest's bittersweet end. So before I spoil too much of tonight's episode, I'd like to take a moment to shout out our winner, who was able to successfully guess the next mall. A very nice job, Ethan. If you'd like to have your chance at being shouted out in the next episode, stick around for the next challenge. Anyways, let's take our Uber to... Oh, yeah. Remind me to rent a car next time. Let's dive in here and take a look at and tell the story of Lake Forest Mall and see how it was doing as of my visit in its final weeks in March of 2023. <laughs> Before we get into the history, we start with the mall's dead food court, which had one last restaurant holding out till the very end. For context, the mall was announced to close on March 31st, 2023, and this footage was filmed just a week prior, so as we get in here and I'm walking around, you may notice some little shops here and there that were all selling off their final items, vacuuming up for the last time, or putting up the gate for good. It was truly sad here in Lake Forest, and a lot of sentiment was going around. Security didn't care about anything that was going on, so dozens of people, at least when I went, were just walking around, taking pictures, reminiscing, and enjoying it one last time. Now see how much of it you can pick up on in tonight's video. Lake Forest Mall's story begins just around 50 years ago, in contrast the last episode's 40 years ago, as Lake Forest, even today, still roots itself into its ever-existent 70s identity. In the far northern reaches of the ever-expanding DC metro, a once sleepy town turned a growing suburb of Gaithersburg, Maryland, was looking to expand. Their city officials were looking to attract the likes of a brand new regional class shopping center, a mall that would hopefully help spur the city's growth along the brand new I-270. The popularity of malls was in full swing, and new, rich, upper, and middle-class families were moving into the newest subdivision, Montgomery Village, in droves, all looking for where the shopping was at. City officials eventually came to upscale mall developers Tommen, well known for their expansive and exasperated concrete mega malls, Marley Station from the last episode being one of them. In January of 1972, a site would be picked out along the newly expanded Montgomery Village Avenue on the site of Old Lake Walker for the brand new South Lake Mall, as it would then be known, Tommen's new premier shopping destination. 
Prior to all of this rapid suburbanization in the mid-70s, Gaithersburg was just a quaint little farm town with not a whole lot going on. Suddenly, not even a mile from that small historic downtown, construction workers were laying concrete for Lake Forest's, as it would then be renamed, giant ovular sea of parking. While all of this was going on, however, behind the scenes, problems were stewing. To go along with tonight's episode, or at least for the simple years of the 1970s, I just had to choose the super iconic Seaberg background music. In any case of Maul, 60s, 70s, 80s, these simple and peaceful tunes always seem to provide the perfect backdrop. So after this one fades out, enjoy Seaberg and its simplistic yet comfy and familiar feels. And try to imagine Lake Forest back in those early years, when all of those stores were still bustling places to be, when you could still meet your friends down by the fountain or catch a show on the stage. Hell, maybe you're shopping down here at this upcoming Lord & Taylor, or Woody's, whichever you remember fonder. Tommen had faith that this mall would work out, constructing Lake Forest through the economic crisis with haste. Several brands that would usually open for Tommen day one decided to hold back on the mall, seeing risk in the project. So, in turn, the mall would only be opening with about a fourth of its stores open, while the rest of the space would be covered by Tommen's iconic cubed plastic walls. Other than, perhaps some overconfidence on Tommen's part, Lake Forest's small construction would go off without a hitch. And in the fall of 1978, the mall and its grand atriums prepared for opening. Between the four sculptures in each of the anchor courts, the other two coming soon, which is your favorite? Let me know down below. Some are obviously more clad in silver and gloss than others, but each of them strikes a different postmodernist feel. I personally think the Sears Court sculpture is the best looking, but maybe that's just me. I don't know, I think the jagged angles go so well with Lake Forest's overall design. Oh, and also, this Christian bookstore, is that not the creepiest looking interior backrooms level ever? All of these old storefronts down here by this old Lord and Taylor are super retro, and a lot of them have been closed for well over 15 years.
We'll wait to open the mall until we enter the next section, but until then, I'll leave you all with a little bit of Lake Forest and its ambiance, which honestly this video fabricates entirely, because this mall was blaring music over the radio. Now down here in the old JCPenney entry wing is where we start to run into some locals. And it's funny because it started with me talking to someone, and then another person joined in, and then another, and it was like this snowball of memories and ideas on what the future would hold for Lake Forest. Now I'll go silent and come back after that. Enjoy! This was my mall as a kid growing up. Like, you know, I remember that that blank wall right there. That used to be a Chi Chi's. Really? It used to be a Chi Chi's restaurant. And if you if you go outside, they still have Chi Chi's murals on the wall. Oh, actually? From like the 80s. That is so cool. Oh, look at the old Express. Oh, this was the old Express, yeah. That's cool. This, I want to say it was. Before it was this, I want to say it was like a, um, it was a place where the kids came to get their uh, prom dresses. They did like, you know, rentals and tuxedos. Oh, really? And, uh, prom dresses. The uh, store directly in front of us, that was a CBS. Before that, I cannot remember. The movie theater was shut down, and then they were trying to revitalize them all at that time. And they got rid of all the, uh, they got rid of all the, uh, Things that went in there, the screens, the seats, and then they just remodeled the whole thing. And I was just, it didn't, I was just like, it's like, it's like the movie theater was ever even there. So it was so strange. Being a local kid, we only saw friends from like, you know, school or when we graduated high school. We would see it and be like, hey, what's up? And it was so beautifully decorated when, you know, when the mall was, you know, jumping. I knew I had to come up here at least one more time. It and feels like this mall like died really fast. It did. I'm shocked how fast it went because in 2020, let's say it was like 2021, maybe 2020, like right before the pandemic. I think the pandemic is what really like put the nail in the coffin. Yeah. Right after that, it was like boom. There was like nothing. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It was like under a chance down the way. It was like open like at least a week or two ago. That finish line, didn't that finish line just recently close? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's like, um, the, the one thing, I, I wish you guys could have gotten to see the Frederick Town Mall because 
the inside of that mall, it was like, it looked like, it literally looked like a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, that one is creepy. Doesn't it still have like the trees and everything? They still have the trees that are up there. If you if you actually go to that mall, you can go into the Boz Cos, the anchor store on the other side, and you can like, you can see in like the cracks down in that mall, and you're like, the whole middle section is gone, but like they have a movie theater on one side, and it's walled off, and everything else is just like, it's just like sitting vacant. I remember when Dan Bell and a couple guys actually broke into that mall. Yeah, after I, yep. I tried opening all the doors. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> well, I mean, people are just still, I mean, as far as they get, you know, clothing and stuff like that, people are just still want to go, you know, go there. And, and that's what I said. Like, so, some, some people still want to go to be able to, like, try all the outfits mm -hmm. instead of having to go and get it and then have to do the shipping and everything else back forth. And then I, I get that, but it's like, you know, how do, how do we go about doing that? It's like, I already know what's going to happen with this mall. They've already said they're leveling this place. I thought being able to talk to locals and people who all remembered Lake Forest just a little bit differently was so fascinating. Hearing about its heyday and how fast it all went downhill was just so much more impactful coming from a local who actually was a mall rat here. I don't think I ever got his name, but I do hope he's doing well now and he's able to look back and remember this mall fondly through this video. And for those of you in the Instagram space, check out Miss Mall Lover, or I Love Dead Malls, for even more beautiful mall pictures, including the ones from this very mall. Now, as we head down into our next section of Lake Forest, we begin our next batch of its history lesson, beginning here in just a moment with the Grand Mall's very grand opening. On Tuesday, September 12, 1978, Lake Forest Mall would officially open its doors to the public as the first quote-unquote far-out mall, anchoring what was soon to be a prosperous, booming region of the Northern Metro. What residents from the area found when walking into the brand new Lake Forest was a dazzling geometric wonderland of 70s splendor. Under dozens of skylights, shoppers found the mall's breathtaking grand atriums and anchor courts each containing their own recessed conversation pits, palm trees, and silver sculptures respectively, to add decadence to the mall's already class 70s design. Between the anchors, Sears, JCPenney, Hex, and Woodward and Lothrop, aka Woody's, lie around 50 inline stores, some notables being The Gap, Town & Country, Godiva, Spencer Gifts, Peanut Shack, Learner Shoes, GNC, and The Children's Place, to name just a few. Upon opening, Tommen would also attract a brand new, fully indoor ice skating rink near Sears. To say Lake Forest Mall was a big deal upon opening was the understatement of the century, as Metro Maryland loved their new mall. And so, in just a few years' time, the entire mall would come to be fully leased out, thriving throughout the rest of the late 70s and into the early 80s. In fact, it wasn't until the mid-80s that the mall's first changes began to take shape. Mmm, shoe department encore, American Eagle, Bath and Body Works. Whenever I'm in a mall like this, you'll always catch me playing which old store was that. And in this mall, it was a very fun game. Coming up here, we head into the old Macy's wing, previously Hex. Now, I wholeheartedly believed that this Macy's would still be open when I came, perhaps maybe in its final days, but it seems I just happened to miss out on this mall's last anchor, which provides for some spooky and purely liminal sights inside. It still had all of its lights on, just freshly closed. And this is where some of the last few businesses and shops that were holding out were now fully closing or moving. And it really was just sad down here. It felt like a bunch of old memories were simply fading off into the flickering lights of those geometric ceilings.
The first year any real changes came to the mall would be in 1984. That revolutionary mall ice skating rink would sadly be stripped away and replaced by a brand new five-screen movie complex called Lake Forest 5 Odeon after just six years. While the removal of the ice skating rink was sad to some, it was ultimately in Tubman's best interest to keep the market current and fresh, and Lake Forest needed a theater, so the addition was much more of a draw than a loss. Other than this addition, however, Lake Forest's rather uneventful and average life as an American shopping center would go on, still bustling day to day with crowds of thousands. Throughout the rest of the 80s and even into the 90s, the mall would retain its status in the now massive suburb of Gaithersburg as the top mall and the top shopping destination for anyone in the area. Yes, that was me trying to understand the purpose of those small steps down. Well, little did I know, but those steps formerly would have gone down to the mall's stage with the center court conversation pits, trees in the amphitheater, waterfall fountains, and the Professor Frog's courtyard. Unless you got to see Lake Forest back in the day, or you've seen pictures of it in the past, you would never know about any of these once beautiful features. Now, it's just an oddly tiled flat space with nothing drawing you in other than the weird steps. As we transition to the next level, we'll see a bit more of the damage. Yes, well, sentiment was shared for the most part of Lake Forest's end, others saw the lax closing of the mall to be a great time to get their anger out, beating in doors or old drywalls. Apparently towards the final few days, it got pretty hectic, with people apparently just stealing things and breaking in old kiosks to grab their forgotten loot. You'll see an example of some of the damage here in just a bit. One of my favorite types of comments I always love hearing from y'all is some memories. How do you remember Lake Forest? Do you have any memory shopping in this Sears court? Perhaps at this very KB Toys? Let me know down below. In 1995, the struggling and soon-to-be-extinct Woody's name would close its doors for good, being the first major anchor name from Lake Forest to abandon ship. The space would sit empty for a short period of time before being retaken by Lord and Taylor, who saw the high-end area sufficient enough to supply its store with any foot traffic it would require. 
But in the late 90s, this was the era in which Lake Forest would sort of lose itself. Starting in late 98, when Tommen sold the mall to a company called GM Pension Trust, who didn't really do anything to keep tenants around. In fact, some high-end retailers would instead choose to vacate the mall, as it just wasn't pulling in the same crowds it did 20 years ago. In a coming age of online shopping, newer, more convenient malls opening, and the advent of big retail killing off little retail, all of this would intensely impact the mall, starting, most heartbreakingly, with the theaters. Something about the clad, elegant, and very ornate music, especially the sounds of those dancing piano notes, just hits so different amid the final days of Lake Forest. I really wish instead of blaring the radio they would instead play tunes like these in the very end. Can you imagine hearing this broken waltz echo down the empty halls and back? It would be Lake Forest's final curtain call. Who knows, maybe that would make my mall less popular, but hey, at least I'd be giving it some identity. In January of 2000, Lake Forest 5 would close its doors after just 16 years, unable to compete in a constantly biggering movie theater industry. Thankfully, owners would actually do something with the space though, spending $5 million to gut and turn it into the Cafes in the Forest, the mall's modern food court, which you may have seen when we first walked in. Don't worry, we'll head back down there later on. I guess this space down by Sears really just couldn't find its identity. You know what they say though, third time's the charm. Upon opening in November of 2000, cafes featured McDonald's, Sbarro, The Farmer's Basket, Kelly's Cajun, and Panda Express, among a heap of other mall restaurants scattered around. Cafes did a great deal to revive Lake Forest in a way, ushering in a new wave of secondhand discount tenants to fill space alongside those national name brands that were closing. The Disney Store, KB Toys, Suncoast, Walden Books, Gymboree, and CVS weren't really those well-traversed names you used to know anymore, and they too would eventually leave. In their spots, well, allow me to list you some of the other names from the 2001 directory. Dollar Place, Warm Fuzzies, My Bag, Mr. Rags. This one literally just says extreme, what even is that? Lake Forest at the turn of a new millennia was going through a shift, still managing to decently fill its halls most days, while also degrading as a tomb of old outdated retail.
I know I said the Sears Court had the best sculpture, but honestly, my opinion once on the second floor has definitely changed, and I think this tall, metallic shard in the Old Lord and Taylor Court has become my new fave. Its unobstructed sightlines and beautifully landscaped aesthetics to go along with it make it the perfect eyepiece for anyone in the area. Too bad there really is no one in the area. I do wonder though, what are they going to do with these sculptures when the mall's torn down? Will they save them, or are these pieces going in the trash? Check this out, this old Mrs. Fields has long since been stripped of its OG red tile looks and has since been turned into this surfer bar? <laughs> I don't know, I just feel a really groovy vibe sort of emanating from this area of the mall. The wave countertop is really what sells me on the theming though. In 2004, the Mills Corporation, just before they went bottoms up, would buy half of Lake Forest from GM, along with nine other malls as a part of a $1 billion purchase. Mills were hopeful to bring new restaurants, entertainment, and big box to the aging mall. However, as we all know, none of this ever happened, and any future expansions at Lake Forest would never come to be. By May of 2006, Macy's had taken over Hex, and just a year later in 2007, Mills would fizzle out, with the mall going into the hands of Simon. Through Simon's ownership and the recession, more stores would keep closing throughout, with drywalls beginning to take over different spans of empty storefronts here and there. Simon by 2011 would default on their mortgage, selling the mall to a company called Five Mile Capital for $100 million in 2012, which under their control is where we see the massacre of the center court fountain. In July of 2013, a new kids' play area opened in the JCPenney court, and that August, the old fountain, stage, and pretty much everything that made the center court amazing and unique was stripped away and covered over. I know I mentioned it a few times previous how the mall was going downhill by this point, but going into the 2010s, Lake Forest was heading towards Greyfield status. If there's one thing you can take away from tonight's episode, it's that Greyfield status is the official term for Den Mall. The term city officials and companies like because it sounds much more schmoozy and less scary. Lake Forest was given Greyfield status around 2017 as dozens more stores were closing than management could fill the gaps. It was a domino effect. In August of 2017, the mall would be sold once again in a private sale for $19.1 million a sheer $81 million less than it was worth in 2012. Five years prior. That's how badly Five Mile ran the mall into the ground. Dotted now by sparse hallways, the few discount brands that did still exist simply never saw customers. As in general, by 2019, people had moved away, moved on, or simply forgotten of the old mall. And very soon, its anchors would do the same.
One fun fact about the mall that I found so interesting was that old brick facading you saw around the bathrooms and management office are straight from opening. Sears, Hex, and Woody's would have all once featured brick facades similar to these colors, but now, these retro bathrooms are all that really remind us. I hope you're all enjoying tonight's music choices. That Frutiger Arrow track previously, and some good old Stevia Sphere are always tunes fitting of Atomman. Songs like this one especially seem to cast a nostalgic grace to them. I can almost picture an alternate reality where the fountain still flows in 2024, and all of the stores are still open, still lit up, and still filled with life. In 2019, the mall would be purchased by WRS Real Estate, who labeled it with Greyfield status and decided to run its clock instead of trying to help it. JCPenney would be the first to close that summer of 2019, ending their 41-year run on July 5th, the day after fireworks had been going off all night in the background, knowingly saluting the first to pass away. That same day of July 5th, a tweet sent by a city council member pointed to the idea that Lord & Taylor was closing their store, and they too would do so by September 15th. Now down to just Sears and Macy's, 2019 was a detrimental year to them all, and it wasn't even over yet. Sears, the last original name to stick by Lake Forest's side through all those years, would too end their 41 years of service closing in December of 2019, leaving Macy's as the mall's last remaining anchor.
coming up here, you'll get to see the second level of that old Macy's. Now, me personally, I'm not one to know too much about Anchor Store Decor, so I'll leave it up to those of you who remember. Was this Macy's interior always like this? Always with these same carpets and colors? I guess a more fitting question would be, are these hex colors? Words can't describe how sad this is. It's not like they're still holding on. It's people cleaning up, vacuuming for the last time, selling their final products. It's over. In October of 2022, WRS announced that they plan on closing and fully demolishing the mall by 2024. These plans were furthered when in January of 2023, Macy's announced that they'd be closing their store at Lake Forest, which would leave the mall anchorless. By this point of 2023, the mall had completely taken the look you see today, a hollowed out ghost town of old memories. WRS surely unveiled plans for the Lake Forest redevelopment, which would see the entire mall structure and all of its anchors gutted and turned into offices, condos, parks, and entertainment. Macy's would officially close their doors on March 18th, 2023, shortly before this video was filmed. And of course, just a week later, on March 31st, 2023, Lake Forest Mall would close its doors for the last time, ending its 45-year run. Lake Forest, after this video was filmed, sat abandoned throughout 2023, with boarded doors and restrictive access. Demolition was supposed to begin this year, but the building still stands, and plans still sit in limbo, waiting for any real progress. The problem is, is that currently the land is split up into five really weird zones, as each old anchor parcel sort of owns its own section of land, and then the mall itself. As of the beginning of April 2024, Lake Forest has yet to be bulldozed, so yes, as you're watching this now, the mall still continues to sit, now just over a year vacant. What do you think the future holds for the site though? Are you hopeful in the redevelopment of the mall? Or do you think it's just going to keep sitting abandoned like this?
everyone here is just taking pictures. Look at those like lights up there. Right up there. What do those ones shine down onto? All these lights. This is once the fountain. Now it was covered up. I told y'all we'd take one last jog down to the food court. This is actually funny enough where I ran into security, who seemed really confused at my presence, asking if I was done taking pictures yet. I told him that I was just trying to collect as much as I could on the mall that would literally never see the light of day again. He seemed pretty content with that answer. Guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching tonight's episode. Tripping out to see Lake Forest and Marley Station was so worth it, and I'm so glad I got to tell this small story. If any of you are ever in the area, stop by Lake Forest and pay your respects to its boarded entrances. That is, you know, if it's still around. I guess we'll see how well this video ages. If you guys enjoy my dead mall content, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss out on future dead malls episodes. And be sure to head over to the Patreon where I share all of my sneak peeks, exclusive content, and so much more. Next Saturday, we'll be live at a mall of your choosing, but two weeks from now, we'll be back once again to tell the story of a mall in a city's heart, kept open solely by its skywalks. Guess which mall we'll be at, and I'll shout you out in the next episode. But until then, we'll let the credits roll here. You all have yourselves a lovely evening, and peace out, guys. I'll see you later.